This ain't what you were drinking last night, is it? Nah, no, nah, I wasn't. This ain't what no. you were drinking nah, last night. Nah, nah, I'd have cleared the whole building if I was going to get that. I'm talking about hey, man. Y'all, you, you, you're ready to move some furniture yeah, in there, yeah. weren't you? All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Hello, welcome to another edition of Club Shay Shay. I am your host, Shannon Sharp. I'm also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay. And the guy that's stopping by for conversation and a drink today is one of Atlanta's hip hop pioneers. He's a three time Grammy award winning artist, record executive, producer, songwriter, actor, entrepreneur, damn, father, trap music pioneer, hip hop icon, music mogul. Damn, he even changed careers, went to stand up comedian, king of the South, Mr. Rubber Band Man. Is it Tip T.I. Harris or T.I. Tip Harris? Whoever it is, T.I., how you doing, bro? Man, what's going on, King? ATL fighters, baby. You did. Bankheads on. Bankheads? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> how you being, bro? Man, I'm chilling, man. I'm cooling. Man, anytime we get somebody from, I'm going to get you. This, uh, okay. Actually, this is my cognac. All right. Uh, it's a VSOP. All right. Yeah, oh, no, wait, wait. This ain't what you were drinking last night, is it? Nah, nah, this I ain't what know. you were drinking nah, last night. Nah, nah, I'd have cleared the whole building I'm if I was going to get that. I'm talking about you, man. You are ready to move some furniture <laughs> yeah, in there, yeah. weren't you? No, yes, I wasn't on this at all. That was just Sprite last night. Mm-hmm. Hey, man, you were showing them folk them boots one just made for walking, huh? <laughs> all right, no. Nah, man. So, welcome to the club. Yeah, How you been? You. Man, I've been chilling. I can't complain, man. I'm glad I finally made it here, man. I've been looking at it on TV. Yeah, I'm glad you made it. I've been trying to get you for a minute, but I'm glad you were in the in the area and yeah. you could stop in. It real player in here. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a nice little line, little nice little feel. They got the velvet ropes right here. It's keep, <laughs> keeping the keeping the riff yeah, yeah, out of yeah, VIP. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We got a real VIP. You dig what I'm saying? When you hear three time Grammy winning artist, what does that mean to you? Um. Uh, it mean I was considered and acknowledged for the hard work that I put in, man, and um, uh, the thoughts that I put into words, that I put on to music, um, and the people that helped me push it out there to the world, uh, that we were being considered, acknowledged, and celebrated by, by our peers and constituents right. amongst the elite. Right. And I appreciate that, you know? But that was that year. You right. You know what I'm saying? It's time to- Do something. We, do evolu it again. Evolution is imminent. Have you ever, you know, you, a lot of, we, we've heard, I've heard, you've heard, a lot of people like they're out on the Grammys, especially if they don't get nominated, they don't win the award when they think they should have won. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been in a situation like, damn, I know I should have won for this album or I should have yeah. won for this song mm -hmm. and I didn't get the recognition that I deserve? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think that, 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 that that's like a rite of passage. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's a part of, of, of being in this business. You have to... Not many people come out and everybody learns about them all at once at right. the same time. So, you know, you you take your wins where you can get them and just, you know, take your lumps and bumps and right. move on. But I think that one moment for me was the King album. I was nominated for Best Rap Album mm -hmm. uh, for the King album. And I believe that 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 that, that award went to, went to Ludacris. Okay. But it stayed in Atlanta. It stayed in A, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What What is some of the your fondest memory. You've been in the game for two decades. Mm -hmm. A lot of ups, some downs. Mm -hmm. What's some of your fondest memories? Uh, man, it was a lot of them. I say, I say, um, I would definitely rank the the birthday bash back in Atlanta when I was just getting out of I was just getting out of jail and people weren't expecting me to show up. Right. So I showed up, surprised the city. That was an incredible moment. Um, it's definitely the week we released ATL and King mm -hmm. in the same week as the What You Know About That premiere um, and, and the film ATL also premiered. That was a pivotal moment. Um, I have to say, Swagger Like Us performance on the Grammy stage. Right. That was a phenomenal moment. Live Your Life performance. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that was the VMAs, if I'm not mistaken. Right. That was a phenomenal moment. Uh, performing with my son, uh, performing with my son. So I just recently, my last album that I dropped called The Libra, mm -hmm. uh, it features a song that features my son, Damani, and it was also produced by my oldest son, okay. Messiah. 
And, you know, we've had the pleasure of performing that song together. Uh, just latest at, uh, at the TV One uh, Honors, mm -hmm. the award show, we performed that song together. And that's kind of, you know, a huge, huge moment for me as well. Was it always within it in the back of your mind? We see a situation where LeBron wants to play with his son, Bronny. We see King Griffey, King Griffey Sr. play with Junior. Uh -huh. uh, it doesn't happen very often yeah. that a father gets to do something in the same profession as his son side by side, especially like the music or sports. Right. Obviously, a doctor, lawyer, we see that a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, father, son, they're in business together. Sure. But we don't see that in the music business. Was that always at the back of your mind? You know what? If my boys, you know, want to do this thing and to be have them side by side with me. Well, to be honest with you, man, first of all, I want to say that I never wanted any of my kids to ever pursue uh, really? the music business. Nah, man, I never did. I never wanted any of my family to, just because me being in it, I know how much treachery. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's some sharks out there. I know how much slime it is okay, out here, man, okay. you know? And, and I can't, and while I'm focusing on doing my thing, I can't really focus on everybody else and making sure to keep knives out of all our backs at right. the same time, Correct. you know? Yes. Uh, but it's always a blessing to see a child tr find his true passion. Right. So if he find his passion in film, in, in, in television, in music, if he or she finds their passion here, I, I, I want to support it. I want to celebrate it and embrace it as much as I can. Uh, I just know it's going to be some, it's going to be some theft. <laughs> <laughs> you feel me? It's going to be some theft out there. But have you prepared him for that? Have you told him like, look, you, I see, I know you see what your dad has now, but there's a lot of water in mines that your dad had to navigate. Just understand, you just don't, you're not going to get all the way to the other side unscathed. Yeah, you know, I think, he, I think he's seeing it, I think he's seeing it firsthand. Okay. Uh, because to be honest with you, Damani I'm talking about, he, he, his skill set is so elevated and he has such a, just an eloquent delivery and, 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 and he's respected. Right. Amongst lyricists, but not considered noticed or acknowledged amongst, you know, major labels as, okay. they, as they looking for artists. Uh, so he kind of peeping game and understanding now that it's a different it's a different road to travel for right. him than it was for me. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that everybody sees you now and what you've been able to accomplish in this business. But it didn't start off all peaches and cream. No. You got dropped by a label. Mm -hmm. And then so when the label dropped you, what went through your mind? You're like, damn, I'm just getting in the business. They drop your boy already? Well, see, the thing is, uh, I think um, a common misconception is that I got dropped, you know, due to a, a lackluster performance. I, I requested to be released. Okay. Uh, after my first album came out, and it didn't, of course, it didn't uh, achieve the 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 kind of the, the magnitude of success that I had expected. What you envisioned, okay. Right, and, and probably the label either. And this came at a time where L.A. Reid had, you know, sold the face. Right. And you know what I'm saying? He he accepted a position as the president of Arista Records. Okay. And all of the roster that was on the face got kind of bound over. Okay. Arista. Okay. And now, uh, instead of it being L.A. Reid in Atlanta with this boutique label, kind of like a Motown in right. Detroit. Yeah. You know, now it's like we got to go all the way to New York to the Arista building to get stuff done, right. different departments, heads, and so on and so forth. So the album came out and it was a cult classic. Like people loved it as soon as they heard it. Right. And I just did a lot of uh, uh, self-promotion, self-marketing, driving from Tallahassee to Jacksonville, to Memphis, to Chattanooga, to, to Greensboro, Augusta, Savannah, mm -hmm. all of the neighboring cities and rural areas and just hand to hand in my product. And, and I just kind of created a swell, you know, they got the attention finally of the people up in New York right. at Arista. But when I got the call, uh, myself and Jason Jeter, we kind of took the position of, man, we kind of been funding this movement ourselves and right. we've been operating as an independent. So for us to go into a second a second cycle, we like to renegotiate, and we want to we want a JV 50-50. right? Uh, or 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 and we want two million, so we could do it ourselves, right? Or you could just let us go. 
And you know, we went to lunch. LA said, you know what? I see what you're saying. I get it completely. Let me think about it. I'm gonna go to lunch. Uh, uh, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. That's a good sign. We going to lunch. Then LA was like, no, no, no. I'm gonna go to lunch. <laughs> You go to lunch. <laughs> right. I like, all right, pizza it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? And uh So what were you thinking? Well, okay, I'm going to lunch, you're going to lunch, but we're not going to lunch together. I didn't have no thoughts at that point. I'm like, okay, cool, we okay. got him. Okay. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. We got him. Okay, okay. I started spending the money in my ah! head already. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so <laughs> we leave and come back, and uh we were greeted by uh the VP at the time, I believe, Mark Pitts. Okay. Mark Pitt say, all right, man, I think y'all gonna be happy. I was like, shh, hell yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Going in there, and they say, all right, I'm gonna give you what you want. I'm letting you go. <laughs> Come on, dog. Not like that. <laughs> I said, bro, you didn't even have to call me back in here. To tell me. <laughs> you could have called us on the phone right. or anything. Nah, but, uh, but he let us go, and that was... Man, that was the more uncomfortable elevator ride back downstairs. Cause Jason was just looking at me like, you know, I could just. He like, why, why, why did you say? Why did you give him that third option? You know, renegotiate the deal, give us two million, or you could just release us. Why you had to put the third option? Why not just go with the first two? I mean, because I felt like the stakes <laughs> had to be raised. You know, what I'm saying he had to understand, you know, just just the magnitude of the moment. But to be honest with you, man, that was the greatest thing anybody in the business ever did for me. I was on fire, you know. I was making like thirty thousand a show. I already had my 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 first single for trap music, which was Twenty Fold right. in rotation on radio stations in Atlanta. And uh, I mean, that was really the best thing that could have happened. I went and got two point three from Atlantic, and and they ended up doing the 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 deal I wanted, giving me the equity that I that I asked for. Right. You know, I just couldn't get it there in that building, right. but he did, man. He was a real solid cat. Still my brother, my mentor to this day. I still consider myself among LaFace University. Um, and he let me go and allowed me the opportunity to be a free agent on, right. uh, 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 with a fair mar at fair market value. And I went out there and made my own way. And that's, you know, the evolution began from there. As you're riding the elevator down, you're no longer with LaFace. What do you say, man? Did you give yourself a timeline? Like, I gotta get to another label. I gotta start doing mixtapes. I mean, so what What was your thought process as you're riding that elevator? You said it was a long, long, a long ride, ride down. down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, to be honest with you, we was already doing mixtapes. You okay. Know what I'm saying? We had already had our gangster grills with drama. Uh, we had some mixtapes drop in New York. We was, like, we were really uh, asserting ourselves and, and becoming familiar with the market. Um, and it wasn't never about how long until we get another deal. Okay, you knew that was gonna happen. Yeah, it was about making the right deal. making this next decision the best decision for the next phase of our career. Okay, uh, and we put ourselves in a position to to catch the eyes of all the labels, uh, but we felt that we were the best fit for Atlantic, you know, because because they needed us as much as we needed them. Correct. You know? Um, and, and they embraced us, supported us, uh, and, and, you know, gave us the platform and the resources to be able to push through and, and break, break through the other side of mainstream success. Did your confidence waver? Cause a lot of times we get released, we get fired, something traumatic, something bad happens. You're like, damn, am I as good as I thought I was? I mean, cause if I was this good, this wouldn't have happened. Did your confidence, did, did your confidence ever waver? Nah, man, because I remember there was something that I asked for. You know what I'm saying? I remember. But did you really ask for it? Like, if you don't give me a raise, if you don't give me a raise, I'm leaving. I, please I, don't give, please give me a raise. I don't want to leave. I mean, no, don't get me wrong. I was asking more so for the two million. Than I was. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, though, like you know, I, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm standing in it. We got to roll right. with it at this point, and we did. And we wasn't in like the worst, the worst position ever because of. The work, the groundwork that had already been right. put in as to the reason why we were called up, up to New York to right. have the to have the discussion. Conversation anyway. Yeah. So when you start your own label, Grand Hustle, mm -hmm. is that something that you you always wanted to have your own record label? To, to be on your own label, to have artists under you? I mean, I always wanted to provide an opportunity uh for other artists to 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 share their story through their art. You know what I'm saying? And I always um uh, 
wanted to introduce new talent to 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 our market. Um, I mean, we grew up looking at cats like man Russell Simmons, uh, Puffy, Jay Prince, uh, Easy E, Shug, Luther Campbell, you know, and and and. and Tony Draper. We just grew up watching cats that came from from nothing turn into moguls by 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 leading their that like the the their peer group into an industry, okay. which was the music being. Correct. So we just understood, like you know, what I'm saying, looking at Master P, looking at Baby and Slim, like okay, so the 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 natural evolution of a successful rapper is to evolve into you know, uh, the owner and operator of your own label and introduce talent to the rest of the world right. when you open the door. Did you enter in any bad deals? We hear about these 360s. Can mm -hmm. you explain to our listening audience what a 360 is or, and what are some of the bad deals that you see artists sign back then and even today? Uh, so what's a 360? Let's start with that. Uh, a 360 means that you have accepted something from the label um, that has given them the right to accept a percentage of everything you do of all of your they call them ancillaries okay. all of your ancillary businesses that means um your your tour money that means uh records your your if you got sponsorship yep. dollars huh yeah sponsorship that ain't got nothing to do with them that ain't no no music ancillary <laughs> now now the, hold on if people actually find that of course they do. I mean, listen, to be honest with you, most times, most artists are only looking for what they're getting right then. Okay. You know what I mean? They feel they're like- They're not looking down the road, they're, they're looking not, right now. Nah, right here, what I, I can mean, see. Because, you know, what we always have is ideas and what the, the industry has is access. Okay. So oh. we usually exchange our ideas for their exit. Uh -huh. And that's how we usually get ourselves. Through. That's why we end up on the short end of the stick. A until we have created the leverage for ourselves right. where we can kind of, you know, tip the scales in the other in the other direction. Right. Yeah. So by doing businesses, doing business with big business, mm -hmm. how did that help you become a better businessman? Well, I mean, to be honest with you, um, well, you had all you already had a business, but it, it was you know. I had been. I had been <laughs> you already had. <laughs> well, it's quite it's quite different. Uh, but nah, man, I had already been researching and reading and kind of familiarizing myself with the business. I read books like Hitman. Okay. And all you need to know about the music business. Right. Uh, you know, I just already read books that kind of taught me what a good deal was, right. what a bad deal was, what publishing was, what mechanical rights was. Mm -hmm. I'd already like researched, and this is when I was like 9, 10, 11 years old. Okay. I was challenged by my uncle. He said, if this is what you want to do, you learn everything it is to know, and I make sure you have the money. And the resources to get you where you wanted to where you want to go, but by the time I read the books, he had then called a ten year sentence. So I had all this information, <laughs> and I still had With no backing behind. I had no backing. <laughs> so you know, cut two when I'm 19 and I get my first record deal, I already know what I'm looking for. Okay, I know what I'm supposed to what I'm supposed to be receiving and what not to give away. Um, and at this point in my career, I I, I find it honorable to be able to tell new artists when they come up to me, you know, man, 21 Savage, Thug, you know, like a lot of them come up to me, hey man, just give me a million tip. Just give me a million, man. I don't care what you do. Just give me a million and let me handle it from there. And I like, nah, I ain't gonna do that. I ain't gonna do, because if I give you a million, I gotta take back something that's gonna be worth way more. And, right. we, and we ain't gonna be able to be friends no more. Right. And you know, and I and I always tell them, man, don't worry about the money up front because it's gonna come. Right. As, I mean, I remember telling that to Slime. I remember telling that the the Twenty One, and and even Savage. Every time he see me now, he'll hit me and say, "Hey, it came." Right. You know, and and that and that that put a smile on my face because I just know how how impactful every generation mm -hmm. has the opportunity to be right. even more than the last. You mentioned that you had been reading since you were 9, 10, 11 about what you wanted, the, the, the process of the music and what goes into it. Mm -hmm. And 
were the music companies surprised at a 19 year old and your knowledge of the inner workings of how the music game went? Um, those that actually had an opportunity to, to, to engage with me, they were. Uh, I mean, I think that I think that we are expected to just jump on the first thing that comes to us. You know, I believe, I even see now, you know, deals that are, that are presented to certain artists and we just expected to just take, you know, the first thing that, that's hard to turn to down it. three to five mil tip. I mean, it depends. Well, you ain't, you ain't, I mean, you ain't had no money tip. Man, you know how that thing is, tip. You eat them King Bottom of them cornflakes. And listen, these folks turn it down, th they, 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 they take it three and five thousand, you know what I'm saying? Like Three to five thousand? That's what I've seen deals. I've seen deals like what? that. Yeah. They offer the date. They sign away their rights in perpetuity for like five, ten, you know, just like tennis shoe yeah. paper, you know what I'm saying? And... I'm not criticizing, right? Because some of those deals go on to support some of the largest, most successful, most iconic artists that this industry right. is known. Uh, but you just got to believe that 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 if somebody offering you this money, they got to think you're worth more. It's obviously worth, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, obviously ain't nobody getting away free money. Exactly. That's one thing ain't people ain't getting away free money. Exactly. They get away a lot of free things. Yeah. But money, you ever see somebody like, hey, not even no free samples. <laughs> 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 the mixtape. Uh huh. Uh, in the mixtape game, you you mentioned you got to go to Savannah, you got to go to Columbus, you got to go to Columbia, South Carolina, you got to go to all these little small. So now you got to put miles on the car and you got to pass it out because it's word of mouth. Yeah. What was that for you? Like, damn, is this thing gonna? I sure hope this pay off. Man, I ain't never even think about it. I enjoyed the process. I enjoyed the journey. I had fun. Like you know, it was. It was sort of like when you. Was in college going yeah. from game to game to game. Yeah, yeah, on that bus. On that enjoyed, bus. Yeah. You enjoy the yeah. camaraderie of the, of, yes. of the teammates. Yes. You enjoy, you know, going in another town and receiving the energy from the people who out there, whether it's positive or negative. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. right. Whether it's the love or the other side. Right. You know, it's all just it's 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 a, it's a, a part of the journey that we appreciate. Um, and I never even thought about whether or not it would pay off. I was just like, man. I just want these people who hear what they, who who hear what we got to say. I just want them to I want them to receive it properly. Right. I want them to receive the 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 art the way we intend. You know, um, it was never a forward thought about. I hope we get rich off this. Something right. Like that. Right. Money was never. We want the money because it take money to make money. But man. It, we always just operated on principle, man. We right. really always just wanted the opportunity to have, let more and more people hear what we got to say because we knew once they hear it, they were going to fuck with it. DJ Drama made the big return in 2022. He's obviously one of the greatest DJs. How did you end up, how did you meet DJ Drama and how did you, this thing go so well between you two? Mm. Um, I believe Jason introduced me to Drama. I don't recall exactly how they met. I know Drum, you know, spent a lot of time in, in, in Atlanta at the AU. He went to Clark. Yeah. Yeah. They don't know about the AU, so the Clark, you Mo feel Brown. Me. You Mo. Feel me. <laughs> Morris Brown making a, a just a, a, a incredible return. Mm -hmm. They just got their accreditation back. You yeah, know yeah. They got a phenomenal, a phenomenal president down there working they working they move. But anyway, so he spent a lot of time at AU. Right. And him and 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 uh and DJ Cannon and Sense and them, they were putting a crew together and they started like just DJing and doing mixtapes. He called me in to freestyle on a mixtape. Okay. And um Had that ever happened before? Mm, yeah, here and there. Okay. Yeah, mostly in New York though. Okay. Mostly in New York. This right. was one of the first time it had happened in Atlanta. Okay. You know? Uh so I came in and I freestyled <laughs> and then I, I I said King of the South in the freestyle. And he kind of raised his head like, whoa, what? What is that? What'd you say? I said, you heard what I said. <laughs> you, <laughs> it out. you heard what I said? And you know, we just had a, a, a conversation about that. And he gave me like, okay, you know, one of right. them. And um, I think that became the first Gangster Grills, right. if I'm not mistaken. Yep. I'm looking, so the DJs in 2022, like I said, DJ Drama worked with Tyler, the creator, Jack Harlow, Lil Easy Vert, Jeezy, J. Cole. When you... And I'm looking at your <clears throat> your collab, bro. Hold. 
three stacks. Kendrick Lamar, Mariah Curry, Jamie Foxx, Justin Timberlake, Drake, Usher, Lady Gaga, Britney Spears, 2 Chain, Future, Nelly, ASAP, Rock, Luda, Jeezy, Lil Wayne, Rihanna, Mary J. Damn, dude. <laughs> I mean, what? When, it's been 21 years. Uh, but when they call, okay, the phone, the phone yeah. rang. Oh, uh, ho, I want you on this. Right. Weez, I want you on this. So, so, so what, what, who was the first big guy? A big person to call you and say, I need you on this feature. Man, probably Destiny Child. Probably Destiny Child for Soldier. Um, that's probably one of the biggest features I remember getting the call for. Okay. Um, okay, they called you and say, we want you on this feature. Yeah. So, so what's going through your mind now? We, we, we on the way. Where, where, <laughs> where we going? But you know you, you got now? You want me to do it now? <laughs> You know, I was excited. I was excited, man. Just especially because, man, we grew up listening to records. You know, uh, I remember waiting to hear the the Bone Thugs and Harmony and, and, and Biggie record. Right. I remember hearing like a snippet. Just couldn't wait to hear the whole song. I remember hear, hearing uh, the Scarface Tupac record. Mm -hmm. I remember hearing... Uh, uh, California Love with Dre and Pac. I remember hearing Two of America Mo Wanted with Snoop and Pac. Uh, I remember hearing uh, uh, the record with, with, with Big and Jay. And just so many collaborations. And I remember the energy, you know, like UGK and Jay Z, UGK and Outkast, UGK and, uh, uh, and C Murder. Like, I just remember waiting to hear this music right. because I, I appreciated these collaborations so much. So when people call me to collaborate, I just want to create that moment right. for the listener, like, you know, like that moment was created for me. You want them to feel when they hear you on a feature like you felt when you heard those other guys on a feature. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Never scared, Bone Crusher. That was really the one that- First like, one. That was the one that like, okay. The first one. Man, who, man, who T.I. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually it was one before that, probably nobody probably never heard. It was a, a R&B group called Coed. Okay. That was uh, signed to, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think, uh, uh, Bob Whitfield label. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And, and I was- Patchwork. Yeah, Patchwork. I was working, I was working at Patchwork and okay. he happened to have a label. They heard me coming up. It was like little quiet rumbling. Right. And they were like, man, let me get this guy real early while I could just slide him a quick 1500 and get him on there. That was my first paid feature. Right. Go ahead. You call yourself the king of the South. Now, you know when you call yourself the king of anything. Now, now it had, listen, call, earned the right to call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah but you I'm already, joking. But you already know what it comes with that. Now, you give yourself a title. Pressure? Yeah. Mm hmm It's going to either bust pipes or make diamonds. Right. It made diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> so... Where you, so when you call yourself the king of the south, and you know there's some heavy hitters in the eight, because mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I mean, like during the nineties, and that was that wave that started coming. You yourself and the and the and the looters and the TIs and the ghetto and not the ghetto boy, uh, Goody Mob, yeah, uh, all you uh, uh, Sleepy Brown, all you guys started coming. It's like hold on, right. and you say I'm the king of the south. Y'all know what this is, right? But see, this is the thing. So like a lot of common misconception is taking place because. We're all we're always me, Luda, Jeezy. We're always kind of grouped in the class before us, right? With like uh, Sleepy Brown, Goody Mob, wow. Outkast, yeah. and so on and so forth. Those are our predecessors, right? You see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like they came before us and opened the door for us, right? But we were a whole nother class. Me, right. Luda, Jeezy, Gucci, like we were yeah. a whole yeah. nother class. Uh, and and when I came and said King of the South, it was never, you know. No, it wasn't about disrespect. It wasn't about disrespect, but it, like, but it wasn't against. I, I spoke to just about everybody that I had access to that came from the class before me. I spoke to the big boy, Andre 3K, all the good him all. I spoke to uh, Scarface, mm -hmm. Bun B, uh, who passed message to Pimp C. He was he was locked up at the time. Uh, eight ball, MJ's, and I spoke to all of them, right? And right. asked, hey man, how do you feel about me calling myself the king of the South just out of respect? Right. Know? And everybody told me, man, go on ahead, man, do what you feel. Right. Cause they knew I was cold. Right. Uh and they 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 kind of, 
they kind of seen a lot of themselves in me. I remember Scarface saying something like, man, you can have it. I don't want to be king. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and uh, I remember 3K, Andre 3000, he was like, so what does it mean to be king, really? <laughs> when you say king, like, what does it really mean to be king? And uh, I remember Big Boy telling me, man, now you know, you say you're going to be king. You can't be looking for no favors now. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, but you okay with it though, right? I don't care what they feel. Like you straight though, right? And but he said something real. He's like, you know, he basically told me you're gonna be putting the bulls on your back. You right. gonna become a target, right? You say you king, you know the game. The name of the game in chess is to kill the king, right? And you know, I came to find that to be exactly the case. But I just let everybody else know that it was okay to say they was king, right? You know what I'm saying? But you're the original king. I, I ain't say I was the only king, right? I was you the first one. Yeah, I was just the one to let you know that it's okay to call yourself that. <laughs> I'm looking at Destiny Child Soldier with Lil Wayne, Robin Thicke, Blurred Lines, and Pharrell Williams peaked at number one. We taking over. I love that one with Aquan, Fat Joe, Rick Ross, Bird, and Wayne, and Swagger Like Us featuring Kanye, Hove, and Lil Wayne. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite feature? I can't say. You ain't got one favorite? But no, nah, yes, I can. The one featuring my son, Demani, that was produced right. by Messiah is called Family Connect off of... Uh, the Libra album. That's that's got to be my favorite. I can't even cap. When you on a track, you on a feature, and you got Hove, and you got Bird, or you got somebody, it's kind of like when we go to the Pro Bowl, you go to the All-Star game. Mm -hmm. I got to let you know why I'm here. That's right. Now, I got to let y'all know why I'm on this feature now. That's so, right. hey, I, hey, just just so we know, yeah, I do this now. Yeah, it's called getting in the blender. <laughs> <laughs> got to so, get in the blender, man. The whole, you know, do, I mean, you hear like Weezy doesn't write anything down, Hove doesn't write anything down. You go, I mean, I don't know how you do it. Do you write things? I've done, I'm ambidextrous. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I've done it both ways. I, uh, but it is healthy competition. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, uh, so I went through a period in my, it depends on what type of song we're trying to make. Right. You know, we make songs like You Don't Know Me, make songs like um, 24s, songs like uh, even Bring Them Out. You know what I'm saying? Certain songs are more about the vibe right. and, and, and the flow, the cadence, you know, um, and it's not as wordy. Like, you know, songs that I actually wrote down was like Live Your Life. Yeah. Uh, you know, just other more meticulous flows. Right. You know, I had to kind of take pen to paper, you know, it just depends. I can't I can't think of it on the top of my head. The one you did with Justin Timberlake. My love. My is it my love or dead and gone? Dead and gone. Okay, yeah. Dead and yeah. gone. Is that a different vibe, dead and gone, as opposed to being on something with Kanye and Lil Wayne? It is. It's more reflective, you know? It's more reflective. And, 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 and it pulls from past experiences. And um, it's definitely something that takes more time, more energy. Um, and, and it just, it has to have more intention. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. um, most times when we when we put words to music, we're really kind of capturing a vibe. Okay. Like this is telling a story. We're trying to kind of, I'm trying to to deliver a message. Right. You know what I mean, and it's a little bit different. So I take it, I take a different approach. Everybody, if probably now the two people that everybody wants to get on a feature. Uh-huh. Hove uh -huh. and Wheezy. Right. You have both of them. How do, how do you pick up the phone and say, Hove, I need you? <laughs> I mean. Uh, Wheezy, I need you. Because they I, ain't take, they not, they not picking, they not, they not calling everybody back. They not picking up the phone <laughs> for everybody. Yeah, I, I think, bro, it was a moment in time. It was, it wasn't really more, I need you than, man, let's get it to the people. Right. Now, true enough, I did need them. <laughs> <laughs> You know, however, I feel like, you know, if I presented to something that's mutually advantageous for right. both for both of us. Right. And it's something to celebrate, you know, each other and, and, and get the fans what, what right. they want to see. Uh, that's a different conversation than just having a one way conversation right. about me just need right. you. You know what I'm saying? Can I ask you a question? And relationships. relationships yeah. yeah. And you, you build great relationships because relationships. I'm sure down the road they might need you. And hey, I need this. I try to be there whenever the people need me, man, and that, that, that have been there for me. I try to reciprocate, you know, all levels right. of, of, of positive energy I can. Let me put this in a sports context. Mm -hmm. If 
Michael Jordan, or Le- let's just say Michael Jordan because LeBron is still playing. Right. Every current player like, man, Mike, that's Mike. Yeah. Hove, do artists feel that way when they meet Hove? Like people feel like, NBA players feel like when they meet Jordan? Mm. It's hard to say. I'm going to tell you something, Shannon. It's really difficult because although I was introducing the world of rap, although I was, you know, I, I, I value my presence and position in the world of, of rap and hip, I just feel like that's my introduction and I have so much more going on. Right. And I, I kind of divide my, my efforts, energy, and attention. So I don't know if... I am looked at as a second coming of anything because of how much other stuff I do. Right. The amount of attention that I pay to the actual music portion of right. my career, uh, I don't know where they place that because I don't know how many other people who do the same amount of right. other things that I do right. <clears throat> uh, at this present moment in my career. Uh, at one time, I would call it the Jay-Z of the South. You know, and and that was that was a, a a phrase that was coined by Pharrell. I I see myself, uh, you know, uh, like a, as a hybrid, a hybrid kind of between, I guess, Jay, Pac, uh, Puff, and and like a a Snoop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Sort of like you know it. I, I kind of hop you in and all out of, yeah. yeah, and I take pages out of the book of legends, and I've been fortunate enough and 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 just blessed enough to be able to have the relationship where I can sit and engage and, and, and soak up game with people like E40, people like Too Short, yeah. people like IQ, people like Master P, right. people like Jay Print, people like Russell Simmons, people like Puff, people like Jay. You know what I mean? I'm able to soak this game up. So I could just take a page out of the book when necessary. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and I don't have to. to anything that you Exactly. Do. I don't have to just settle in one shadow. Right. <laughs> you know right. what I mean? Yeah. I can hop in and out right. of as, as needed for my, for my career. And I feel like that's what I've been blessed and able to do, fortunate enough. I'm looking at some of the producers you work with, Pharrell Williams, Kanye, Dr. Dre, Jazzy Faye, ATL's own, Swizz Beats. And then you look at Dr. Dre. Right. Uh, all these guys, but Dr. Dre, when it comes to when it comes to producers. Right. Dre Day. Dre D R E is mm-hmm. is it. Right. What what are some of the similarities and what are some of the differences? Like when you go into the studio, uh, did you know what to expect when to each individual guy when you go into a studio, say with Jazzy Faye or Swizz mm-hmm. or, or Dre or any of those guys, mm-hmm. what's your expectations? And then what are the expectations that they have for you? Well, I go into it with more of an appreciation than I do an expectation. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I just appreciate the opportunity to be working amongst the elite. Right. You did. And the list that you named, I, I mean, I value, respect, and, and, and appreciate all of, from the top to the bottom of that list, but I can't move forward with talking about producers without acknowledging uh, DJ Toon. Right. Because that's, you know, that's the guy who was the very, very, very first professionally. Mm-hmm. You know, to come in and say, hey, I think he dope, take me under his wing, give me his beats, right. and kind of introduce me to the world. Right. So that's my Dr. Dre. Right, okay. You know what I'm saying? So uh, what we had, what we built, I think it kind of shaped and molded a sound and a genre for generations. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, however, you look at Pharrell. Pharrell was the first, like, superstar A-list producer who would say, you know what, I like that guy, I'ma work with him. You know what I'm saying? I'ma I'm I'm, I'm give him access to, to, to my skill set, to my talents and my efforts. Uh, he did that my first album. And then- you So know, he reached out to you? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> he said yes. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, but at the same time, he said yes when he was getting a hundred some thousand dollars a track and I couldn't afford to pay that. Right. So he had to kind of like, in, in the sense of sports, he had to take a pay cut. Yeah, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? He had to take, well, for the, he had to take a haircut for the team. To yeah. fit in the cap. To <laughs> fit in the cap. Yeah, the cap. So we could play together. Right, okay. You know what I'm saying? And he was gracious enough to do that uh, time and time and time again <laughs> uh, until we grew. 100,000 a track? Now he was. 
he so, would, that he, what he was getting. Maybe more. It's more now. Yeah, of course. So how you, so hold on. He getting blank checks at this point. So hold on. So you have a, you have an album. That man do 12 songs. That's 1.2. So I mean, you better sell about three, four million copies. I mean, listen, okay. <laughs> we getting ahead of see. <laughs> First of all, if if you get 12 track from Pharrell for one album, it's usually gonna be on his label. Okay. You did? Yes. However, if you get two or three, you know what I'm saying, you can expect to part ways without the consideration. Okay. Without a downward departure consideration, you could expect to part way with about a half a million. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and he, you know, he found way. Exceptions are made for exceptional circumstances. Yes. And he found reason to make the exception. And he fit in my cap. Right. My first album. <laughs> and we just developed a relationship and, and, and we've been working together ever since. Right. Um, and that's a, that's one of the dopest producers I've ever worked with. Jazz and Faye as well. Yes. I see Dr. Dre sold his catalog for 200 plus million. Are you, Damn. Look, are you looking to get up off your catalog? No. You I mean, well, 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 oh, oh. well. Okay, okay. Listen. Um, Everything got the price? I don't want to say that. No, I think that there are many ways to uh, utilize the benefit and manipulate your catalog. Uh, one of them is selling it outright. Right. And another is licensing. Right. You can license someone the use of your catalog for a period of time right. based on what it's earning right now. And the same way they do other companies, you know what I mean? Right. If I have an You can sell your house or you can turn it into an Airbnb. You did. I mean, like for instance, right? So so if I have a, let's say an intellectual property. Okay. Say, Club Shay Shay. Yes. You own the intellectual property. I do. And all of your episodes, let's call it a hundred episodes. Right. That's under your ownership. Yeah. You can license it to ESPN right. for 10 years okay. based on what each of these episodes have earned you over a course okay. with an 8X or a 10X or however many X. You can license it to Fox. You can license it to, huh. you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And you can get the money like that and there's that. a reversion period. Uh -huh. So after that period, it revert back but to you and you get the- And I can tell, put I can let, let them have it again. Some more and some more and some more and some more. I can say, nah, I won't hold on to it because I see what y'all doing. I'm going to do it myself now. You feel me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so more okay. than one way to skin a cat. Yeah. You hear that, Hollywood? Yeah. We going about it all wrong. Mm. <laughs> I ain't say that because everybody got to make their own decisions, you did. You heard what he said? You the business man. I'm taking I'm, I'm just saying, you know, but they got to, but you got to know what's right for you because you know what I'm saying? They say, okay, we can do it like that or we'll just give you this 150 right now. It just depends. You did. Hollywood, <laughs> 150 million right now. Oh, <laughs> we do the version. I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to get up off it. I ain't gonna lie. Like, Sometimes it off it. be about legacy. It don't be about money. You see the yeah, because I don't want them to do away with that. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So, see, see, see. We don't want people just being able to just toss us around right. and, and and put our face and our name and our our, our logos up on anything right. without our, right. our input. You know what? You I'm know, glad you said that because I was thinking about you know my cognac. Mm -hmm. I said then someone asked me like, would you sell it? And I was thinking, if I sold it. <clears throat> What is it? Because it's named my grandmother, Laportier is Porter in French. Mm. In, and so, I uh, in French. I said, so no, what if they took that off there? And then I ain't got no legacy. All I got is this money that I made off of right. it. But what I really established, started this for, is gone. So it, what is that worth? Integrity, to me, is more valuable. Can't put a price on that, huh? It, it can't. You know, so I say the true measure of wealth is, is by the amount of things someone has that money can't yeah. buy. You did. Yes. Uh, Cause some people are poor. All they have is money. Right. You did. Mm -hmm. You know how much respect, how much family, how much love. You know what I mean? Like how 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 many priceless things do you have? Right. I think that's you know that's that's what I kind of try and incorporate into my decision. Man, I'm looking at young girl. Say he recently revealed that he spent five million on clothes and could not wear the same thing every day for two straight years. That's my brother. Yep. You ain't spending brother. five million on clothes, are you? Not no more. Oh, not no more. Oh, I done did it. What was some? Well, give me some some of the wasteful things I that you spent it. your money on. All kinds of stuff, man. I mean, jewelry. I mean, on my 25th birthday, this is something that I remember with great detail, vividly. On my 25th birthday, I bought an Aston Martin Vanquish and a a, 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 a McLaren SLR. Bought them both. Had them dropped off same time, same right. date. Then they both got out there, paid for them cash. Too. Right. And then they both got like out half there. Half a meal, three quarters of a meal, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, so, so when they got there, when they got there, 
I'm walking around and when they like, you know, they loading them off the right. truck, dropping them out, handing me the key, signed for it. And I'm signing there. I'm like, I can't drive both these cars. At the same time. At the same time. What the hell am I going to do? You know, then I told Tamika, my wife, well, she was my, my girlfriend at the time. I said, hey, here, drive one on. She said, no, I want to ride with you. I said, what the hell did I just do? This was the dumbest <laughs> damn thing. This was the dumbest damn thing. You got thing. two cars, but you can only drive one at a time. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, it was just all kinds of stuff. I overpaid for a house. We wanted to stay on the lake so bad. We wanted, then this was just, I was just proving a point. It's a lake called Lake Spy well, I mean, in Atlanta. I know yeah. exactly where it is. Yeah. And it's the only sports lake, like, within, like, the metro area. Yeah. And if anybody know about Atlanta, it's, it's land. Locked. It is. Ain't no water for real. Good thing. Cause can you imagine Atlanta with a beach? Man, I smell the salt water. Now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know how free, can you imagine when Freak Nick was at his height in the 90s, Ooh. if they'd have had a beach? If Peachtree was on the water, can you imagine? If it was a... No, if, I don't want to imagine. <laughs> I don't want to imagine. <laughs> but so, okay, so we wanted to stay on this lake so bad. Mm -hmm. It was her dream to stay on the water, stay on the lake, and we looking for houses. And she just, you know, she was rich before me. So, you know, when I got my paper, she showed me how to spend my money. You know ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and we wanted, we found this house. It was almost finished. Right. And uh, we, we had fell in love with it. I had already put in an offer. They would accepted our offer. We were going to get this house. And then, I don't know if a neighbor came out and saw us looking at it or some, some kind of way. Got word back to the, the owner, the seller of the house. Yeah. They wouldn't sell it to us. They like, they just wouldn't sell it to us. I, I, I don't know because I was a rapper, because I was young, because I was black. Combination of all the three. All three of them. You yeah. know what I mean? But they wouldn't sell to us. And, and I just saw, like, I don't know if it was pain or disappointment or just the anguish on her face. I was like, man, we're going to be on this late. Now I want to be. Now I'm taking this shit personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, we started knocking door to door, man. I started riding around, finding a house. I stayed there. We pulled up. Hey, y'all want to sell y'all house? And uh, we found one. The one that I'm in now on the lake, it was a, um, a middle-aged Indian family. Well, Indian man who had a family. And he had just built the house maybe two, three years ago. Mm -hmm. He said, you want this house? I was like, yeah. And uh, I paid him about 500000 over. What, do you, what it was worth. Right. You know what I'm saying? And that was one of the dumbest things that I've You pulled an Oprah. I did. That what Oprah did. Oprah went up to Montecito. How wasn't he for sale? She knocked on the door. Them yeah. people left. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we, <laughs> <laughs> we did that. Hey, we did that. He, guess what? I just remember looking at him like, so like, like, like he looking at me like, you, uh, you, you really gonna give me this much? Mm -hmm. He gave me the number like, I know he ain't gonna get it. I know he ain't gonna give me this. Right. Man, the, the folk stayed in a hotel for three months. <laughs> So we could buy this house. You right. feel me? That's one of the dumbest things I've done. But I still, but we have so many memories in the house. Right. Raised a family, children grew up. It's the house that y'all see on Family Hustle. Yeah, that's that what house. I want to talk to you about. What about it? Because you're a great family man. I see you how you blended your family together. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. And I, that's what I want to ask you about. It's not easy having your life play out in front of everybody to see. Because everybody, oh, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't talk to my kids. I wouldn't give this to my kids. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do this. Yeah. Is it hard having your life play out for others to judge? Uh, if you are going to be emotionally attached to how they receive it, if right. you're going to have an emotional attachment to their opinion mm -hmm. of what you're doing, if you're going if you going to care about what they're saying, yeah, it's going to be hard. Uh, but if you just kind of take from it what you want from it. Right. And if it don't apply, let it fly. Right. And you can, you know what I'm saying, kind of woosaw yourself outside of the public opinion. Mm -hmm. Then I think, you know, because I tell you what, I, I have the greatest, most extensive family photo album. I can document and like, I could go back to when King was Eris's age. Mm -hmm. I can go back to when Major was my granddaughter's age. And 
I wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for Family Hustle. Right. Now, it does come with some, you know, it's some adversity. Mm -hmm. It's some adversity to come with that. People get in your bed. And, yeah. You know, but. Then but, you a private man. I try to be, man, you know, but at the same time, I'm not going to. It's kind of hard to be, be a private man in the public life, huh? I'm not going to live my life in a bubble for some, because of some other person's, uh, I guess, lack of awareness. Okay. You can't give people with the least amount of information the most consideration. Oh, okay. Wow. You did. Like that. You did. I know you know the absolute least of me, so why would I give you the most consideration? You know, you just talking about what you know, and what you know is it's it's a it's 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 a minutia. I'm looking at you, you the, the transition, ATL takers, get hard, identity thief, ant man. How were you able to make the transition so seamlessly from being a rapper to going on the big screen? I don't know if you would exactly call it seamless. Uh, my first film was ATL. I had the pleasure of acting in it uh, because, you know, coming up amongst the ranks in, um, in Atlanta, uh, it would bring me into the company of all of the legends in the, in the city, and I could not meet all the legends without coming into contact with Dallas Austin. Okay. And Dallas Austin was a huge, huge, huge producer, yeah, songwriter. Yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah, man, just just an incredible talent and an incredible mogul. And uh, he was getting into films. And he had this one film. And it was I was working on my first album. He was telling me about his first film. And you know, I was always like, yo, bruh, Put me yeah, in it. Put me on. And he was like, all right, yeah, man, say less. And he sent me to go read, and I read. They were like, man, you got to learn how to play the drum. I was like, man, I can play I can play like I can play the drum. He was like, nah, you got to learn how to. I'm like, man, I don't want to do that. Uh, I just didn't want to commit myself to it at the time. It wasn't there, you know. Uh, but I read, and I didn't get it, you know, and that movie went on to be Drumline. Wow. You know. So you uh, going to be Nick Cannon? Yeah, yeah, I was reading for Nick Cannon part, yep. Yeah. So, you know, some nobody came and got there. <laughs> you know what I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at you, you were gonna move American Gangster. But that opened, but look, though, that opened the door for me to do ATL. Yeah. After, after I didn't get the role for Drumline, uh, I went back to Dallas and say, man, next time, bro, just give me the role. I ain't going to read or nothing, just give me the role. <laughs> he was like, cool, you know, and he just gave me the role for, for Rashad and ATL. And a lot of time, Nick Cannon and I, you know, we be going back and forth, you know, and, and we get we get on each other. I be like, yeah, man, you took my role. And he said, yeah, but I'd have traded you for your role. You know what I'm saying? I said, you couldn't have did my role. Right. You know? And we just, you know, we have that kind of a rapport. So I'm happy, you know, all things happen for a reason. What God got for you, can't right. no one take from you. You got two, I'm gonna get you out of here on two things. You did the middle with uh, American Gangster with Denzel, bruh. That's, I mean, if you're in a movie, I mean, you can't ask for a better than to be in the movie with. I had no idea why the hell they called me for real. You know what I'm saying? Right. At first. Right. I was like, you sure you want me? You know, not, I mean, you had Denzel, Ridley Scott, Rizzo. You had uh, Ruby D. You had uh, Common. You had Chuatel. You had just so much phenomenal talent. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cuba Gooden Jr. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, and I'm like, be up, me? You for real? And I remember um, the scene where I was, we was preparing. We had the the, the camera blocking or, or rehearsal for the scene that that D Dub and I were about to do together. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, D Dub, that Denzel, yeah, that's what I call him. I call him D W, D W, that's what I call him. Um, nah, I'm just joking. But we, but we had to get um, uh, this rehearsal for this scene. And as we rehearse, and I'm pacing back and forth, pacing back and forth, and he say, "What's up, nigga? You nervous?" I'm like, "Man, I'm just, just making sure I don't mess it up, man." He say, "Hey, man, listen, listen, y'all." They could have had anybody in here doing what you're doing right now. They could have had anybody in the world. They could have called anybody right here to do what you're doing right now, couldn't they? I say, I say, yeah, yeah. He said, they called you here for a reason, didn't it? I say, yeah. He said, you know what that, you know what that reason is? And I start thinking, I say, yeah, I think, yeah, I do. 
He said, all right, then, nigga, do that, and you ain't got no reason to be nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I read that you had a famous act to get mad at you doing a table read. Yeah. Uh, what, what happened? Mm, say no to drugs, kids. <laughs> say no to drugs, man. I, uh... Yeah, that was Morgan Freeman, man. Uh, and, and and just to be honest, I, I I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared, and you know that was an opportunity I should have taken more seriously. And I completely accept accountability, and I've grown from that. Uh, but I will say he made me feel this big. I mean, no, like you you Lord seen you seen Lean on Me? Yeah. Remember on the roof? Yeah. Jump. <laughs> Jump. <laughs> Smoke crack, don't you? Jump. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I feel like, man, that was something that I needed. Right. That was something that I needed on my on, on my on my journey because that it was like a shock to the system. Right. You feel me? Right. It was a shock to the system to let me know, man, I ain't never finna put myself in a position to have, you know, nobody be able to chastise me in right. such a way. Right. Uh and all in all, man, I really do feel that, you know, I could have contributed to the movie and made it right. better than it was. But but I put myself in a position where that opportunity was taken from me right. and it's nobody's fault but my own. Tell us about the movie. Man, the movie is called Fear. Um, Fear is a psychological thriller. Uh, Dion Taylor uh, wrote, directed, produced it. Um, it's an ensemble cast, myself, Terrence J, Joseph Sikora, um, uh, King Batch, uh, Ruby, uh, Annie, and 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 others, and and it's 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 about some friends who meet up at a lodge during the height of the pandemic, mm. and they don't realize that the lodge is haunted. Mm -mm. It's haunted, and it responds to your fears. You acknowledging fears, and when you acknowledge your fears. And you you feed into them, they bring those fears to life. So how each person responds to facing their fears is really that's that's the the the, the nucleus of this film. Wow. Best of luck with the film. Thank you. Congrats on all the success. Hey man, January 27th. I need you to, you know what I mean? I need you to show up and show out the way you do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know. That just like you do for LeBron. I need you was, to just that, that was that was a one-off. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to show up and show out. You what? know, now, now you got to lay, man. You got on skip ad too. Now I seen you get on now, skip you know, ads. I, you know what I'm saying? But see, I, but I did so. I, I, I maintained my cool, and that, you I, did? I, I, I prided myself, and then I let my emotion. Cause I can't. I'm not gonna say that was me. Cause that was Kanye. Me. It was before the Kanye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Made it to the Kanye. You know, some people say that's not me. No, that was last night. That was that me. was you. That was yeah, just yeah, me yeah, out of character. Yeah. But that was me. I mean, man, listen. I think what's important to always understand for everybody. We all fall short of the glory. We do. Ain't none of us perfect. No. Nope. Humans are fallible. Our, our flesh is weak. Uh, if you're a Christian, what you what, what you understand is uh, uh, through repentance and acceptance, mm -hmm. you're able to get a chance and a choice every day. You right. know what I'm saying? And, and, and shouldn't nobody be pointing no fingers. And anybody who try to maintain a perfect image and try to make it seem like right. you don't make no mistake, that's It'll when, remind you. The, and, 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 and as soon as you step outside the line, that's when it's going to be such a big deal. I already let you know, listen, man, I didn't mess up today. But if I do, God going to forgive me. So why would I hold your word or your, your criticism more than I hold to the Lord's? And I think, man, that's what we got to all get into, man. We got to, we can't keep on just holding each other under a microscope, expecting us not to step outside the lines of right. perfection because that's something that anybody can have held against them at any time. Right. Let me get you out of here on this. <clears throat> Comedy. I mean, outstanding rapper. You've been great in movies. What the hell made you say, you know what? I'm gonna try this. Man, it's a, well, first of all, I didn't plan on it. Okay. You know, I've always had an enormous amount of respect and admiration. Um, for any of the arts. For the art form of comedy. And comedy, like going to see comedians, mm -hmm. it's always been what me and my wife did. It was our thing. You know, we'll go out, we'll hit the comedy clubs. I've even had like big, big open mic nights, you right. know, uh, tripping on Sundays, tripping on Tuesdays. And um, it wasn't until January 12th, 2022, 
I went to see K-Dub, who's a partner of mine, happens to be a comedian. And he had an open mic night. I went to support him. There was somebody on stage having a horrible go of it. Right. And we could agree that he was not doing well, but we couldn't agree exactly why. I felt like, you know, the guy, you know, he wasn't connecting with the audience and, you know, he just his confidence level was low. And, and, and K-Dub was like, nah, he's telling them boring ass story. He ain't getting to the jokes. And we were going back and forth like that at the bar. And he finally looked at me with a menacing scowl and said, well, I've been doing it 20 years. When you gonna get on stage since you know so much? I was like, man, come on, man, stop playing. You tripping. And so I go back down, sit with my wife. He go up to the stage, get the mic from dude after he finishes sit. And when he get the mic from dude, he say, all right, coming to the stage, whether he know it or not, uh -oh. Chip Harris. <laughs> <laughs> He put you on the spot like I'm that. I'm talking about for real, bro, you know? And, <laughs> and uh, so I, I, you know, first I was just, you know, trying to shy it off and then, you know. Man, go ahead. I, yeah, you know, yeah, man, yeah but you crazy, man. man. I, you crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Next comedian, y'all come on, quit playing. <laughs> and they started clapping so loud, you know what I mean? So I just had to think of something from the seat to the stage. And I went up there and really just talked about my day, for real. Right. Talked about my day, got my first laugh, and I was hooked. You hooked. And I freestyled for like 35 minutes. And I get off stage and, and, and I see K-Dub, he like, man, you probably need to come back. And I sit down, I knew I did something right because my wife said, how did you do that? And she's never impressed with <laughs> right. anything right. I do. Uh, and I, be, I started doing it every day ever since, man. And it's now uh, 50, 54 weeks in comedy for right. me now. Your family. I mean, I, I think the thing is that you document that you're not perfect. Your family is not perfect. You have yeah. issues like a lot of people have with your kids. Sure. And you, you know, I think King yeah. is the one that that that's that on my, social media that have a little issues right that my, now. They're my twin. And, and you like, bro, you know, I've done everything I possibly can. But some like my grandma used to say, boy, you don't know how bad somebody head hurt until you bump your own. You dig what I'm saying? And so you like, he gonna have to find this out. I told him. The same road that he's doing, mm -hmm. I've been down there. I'm trying to tell him I to honestly, keep him from going down there. I honestly ain't been down the road. He was he was going <laughs> down because I've never had access to millions of dollars. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just kept, but at the same time, I understand that he don't want to be like in talking to him because I have a he don't like being lectured to talk to him. Not really, just that I have an excellent communication with all my kids. I try to listen right as much as I speak okay to them right and his. From his position here, man, I don't just want to be celebrities' kid. Like I don't want to to live off of y'all's success. I don't want to have to just be in y'all's shadows. And um, he really, he really want to be kind of looked at as his own man. Not just as his own man, but he. He want to go through the, the different challenges and adversities. He want to be tested and be right. graded on his response right. to right. whatever his skill set is right. in that area. Okay. Not, oh, well, he did he did bad because he T.I. son. Or he did good because he tiny, uh, tiny son. Right. You know what I'm saying? He he just really want, he want, he want, he want a clean slate. And I try to tell him, you'll never have that, son. No. You'll never have that. Because you know your dad and your mom. You can't give it back. No. You were born with it. You can't give it back. You may well we embrace can't help it. who we're born to. Exactly. And you know, but I love him and I understand he has a strong sense of moral standards and integrity. A fabric that most people in his generation don't really necessarily carry with them. Right. So I appreciate that. Try to take the good with the bad and just let him know. You go into prison if you keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't wish it on him. You right. know what I'm saying? I don't wish it on him. And I, I love him through it. Whatever he going through, I love him through it. And I can't say he a great kid enough, but the, the, the media don't talk enough about the good the part. The thing that he does. Just you know bad. what I mean? All they do is focus on the bad because they get them more clicks. Right. And, you know, I try to make him aware of that. And, you know, when we young, we kind of talk about things based on how we think they should be. Right. Rather than acknowledging them for how we know they are. Uh, right. And I just try and, you know, walk, walk him through it. He get better every day, though. Right. And another thing I'd like to say, I want to say uh, about, about, about King, right? Yes. As much criticism as I receive about my son, I would like to shed light on the fact. 
We all got bad ass kids. Okay, <laughs> now listen, don't make it seem like I'm the only one on here who got not, bad ass kids. Not, we all go through. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. If you ain't got no bad ass kids, you got one and you got lucky. You hear me? Yeah. Anybody with three or more, with multiples. You got one that you don't know what the hell you gonna do with. Right. You feel me? Yeah. So I just want to take just take the time to say that. Ti, you can you walked in the shoes of like what YSL is going through. I mean, no, nah, I ain't never close, been through that. Not, clo I ain't not, never close, been not that. close, I mean, I but you know, you spent some that. time, you know, you was doing, you didn't get that Rico. Uh -uh. Uh, <laughs> you didn't get that Rico hit on, nah, put on you. I but was... if, if, if you could offer them some advice, because what is what is art and then what are you talking, bro, you, you did that and now you singing about it? First of all, what, what, I, what I take, a, what I make a point not to do is talk about nobody case. Right. I don't talk about nobody case. Okay. Everybody got their own journey. Uh, Thugger happens to be somebody near and dear to my heart. Right. You know what I'm saying? He one of the ones that really I have a very, very, very close connection with. Um, and I, I hate to see him going through it because I know how good his heart is. Right. I've seen him just be so selfless and think about nothing Everybody but the other person. You know what I mean? I've seen him give, give thousands to cats just to keep them out of trouble. I've seen him you know, just just throw his 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 earnings to the community in such right. a way. I, I just hate to see him going through it, man. And I don't know what to say. Just you know, keep your chin up. Right. Keep your chest out. Just remember, you got people out here that love you, because that's really the that's the true that's the true intention. Make people think that they locked in a dog hole and you know and they don't have no now. support. You know, like you cut off from the rest right. of the world, make you think like you're going through it by yourself. Um, and I just make, I just want to make sure that he know that he ain't going through it by himself, and he got people that still love him. One thing you out of him, this one for real. Walker says something very interesting. He says like, once you become somebody, you can't continue to try to prove that you're still down from the neighborhood that you came with, like shooting dice and playing cards and going to do it all those things, because you're not that same player, that same person mm -hmm. that you were. Mm -hmm. You look at takeoff, uh, and it was look a very unfortunate situation. Mm -hmm. They're rolling dice. I mean, we're not, we're, I mean, can do, I mean, obviously, you you from Bankhead. First of all, yeah. I ain't seen them shoot no dice. I ain't seen them shoot no dice. I don't know what happened. Right. I wasn't there. Right. So all I that's can, what we're being reported. But uh, yeah, I know it. I know it. But see, that's the thing. Like I that, that it ain't yeah. I wouldn't see it. Right. I just try uh, to focus on what's important. Man, we lost the life of an icon. Right. You know, and even more than that, a brother, a son, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, a nephew um, and, and a valued member of the community. And I just want to celebrate his life, what he meant, um, his legacy. I don't want to get into no speculation, hopping right. in and out of opinions on what should have and shouldn't have. Man, that ain't got nothing. To, that that it, to me, that's not even important. Once we talking about the loss of life, correct? You know what I mean? Um, I just, man, I feel for his family. I feel for his partners. I feel for Offset. I feel for Quavo. I feel for P and Coach and everybody involved, man. Because I know what it was like. I didn't been. You in lost this, your partner. I lost my partner. I didn't had to come home and tell somebody, family, that they wasn't gonna make it back. You know what I mean? Did, and that's did that a, change you? It, it, immensely, immensely. I feel like that was that that was the beginning. Well, that was the epiphany. Was that the eye waking? Was that the eye opening moment for you? It was the first domino. You feel me? It was the first domino, man. And um, I think because that led to the paranoia, the suspicion, and uh, the heavy heart that I had that caused me to make the decisions that led to my arrest. Mm -hmm. And which led to, you know, the next part of my 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 career and and the next phase of decisions I would make. Um, I know how traumatic and how how emotionally taxing it could be. So I just feel for everybody going through it, you know. And I just hope to be able to share whatever I can share to help in any way I can. Um, but I ain't, I just, the, the number one way I can help is not add on, you know right. what I mean? So I just ain't got nothing but some positive energy and some good thoughts to to to, to share to the world. On oh, boy. 
Love and respect. Appreciate the 60 minutes. You feel what I'm saying? You it flew by. It did. It did tequila. The tequila had it fly back. And, what, you and I don't even look how much I had left. No, no. Shannon drunk all the hills. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Yeah. All my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Want a slice, got to roll the dice. That's why all my life, I've been grinding all my life.